Henrik Kjernström, CEO, and Patrick Hortman, Director of Corporate Development and Investor Relations. Immediate actions are being taken to improve profitability following weaker than expected um, performance in the quarter. Henrik, how would you summarize the Q4 performance? It was a mixed bag of performance. We saw a, a World Cup, first time ever in the winter season, which brought good intake and activity, but the, the turnover and, and revenues did not follow uh, on the back of the activity. So uh, we're not pleased with the level of profitability we achieved in the fourth quarter, and hence we're taking immediate actions to improve our uh, profitability, both short and, and medium term. Thank you. Yeah, and it's been an eventful quarter, no doubt, with uh, the first ever Winter World Cup. Uh, Patrick, Kinder's performance in um, many of the locally regulated so-called core markets, like France and um, Netherlands and UK and Sweden, has been uh, encouraging. What, what can you say about the development in these markets? Yeah, first of all, uh, uh, development in local regulated revenues overall was very strong. and. Uh, we had uh, around 30% increase year over year in local regulated revenues, obviously driven by the Netherlands to a large extent. <clears throat> and um, we now, first time ever, we're above 80% uh, uh, in share of locally regulated revenues. We came in at 81%. But if uh, taking those few markets that you mentioned there, um, we France, uh, which is a big sports market for us, had a strong performance with good activity during the World Cup. Um, number of actives increased by 13%, and we had uh, revenues increasing year over year by 11%. And, um, and that was despite a, a, a sports betting margin which, which was below the, the long-term average for, for France. Um, Sweden, good performance, it was in, in all product verticals. Um, obviously here, um, the, the comparative period was distorted by by the um, uh, temporary COVID restrictions, which were lifted last year in November. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were up 19% um, in, um, in, in Sweden year over year, so very solid performance. UK, we have tightened, tightened the affordability measures during uh, the second half of the year. And despite these um, further measures taken, we were flat year over year, so a okay performance. And then Netherlands, uh, which was clearly the star in the report, um, we, we, had, we came in 53 million in revenue contribution from Netherlands. That's 69% increase compared to the uh, third quarter this year. And um, yeah, with good activity, 209,000 active customers. So very pleasing indeed. Mm. Indeed, very yeah. pleasing. Henrik, in contrast to these markets that Patrick were alluding yep. to, um, Kinder is suffering from headwinds in Belgium and in, in Norway. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you say about these markets and expectations also going forward? Yeah, there were regulatory changes in Belgium that came into force on the 20th of October with the deposit limits uh, that are subject to a check against the government registers. And if the customers are fine, then they can, the limits can be increased. Uh, so that uh, had a negative impact, at least short term, on, on the performance. That is similar to what we saw in 2019 when there was a similar introduction of, of the first wave of, of deposit limits in Belgium. And it took a couple of quarters for us to improve the customer experience and for the customers to navigate their way in, in that new landscape. Uh, and then we returned Belgium to strong growth for s consecutive years post that. So we believe this is a sort of similar thing, uh, that, that it will be a, a question of time before the, we return to growth also in Belgium. But for Q3, as we reported then, with a 13% decline and now with a 15% in constant currency, was a further decrease and expected one in a sense, uh, in hindsight. We, of course, we, we thought that the World Cup would be good in Belgium and that we would actually see a growth in Belgium also in Q4, which we failed to do. Norway, we made further changes to our offering to, to further clarify that we're only passively accepting Norwegian customers. Uh, and that also had a negative impact on revenue. So if you combine Belgium and, and Norway for Q4, it was around 6.1 million pounds of, of negative contribution from, from those markets or decline year on year. Uh, we had hoped that those markets would and expected them to actually grow during Q4. So that was a kind of a, a negative swing for us. 
Also, we had uh, in the, the sportbook margin that was lower than the long-term average that Patrick was mentioning. Mm -hmm. That was also an element of, of uh, the kind of below our own high expectations revenue generation for, for the quarter. Mm. And, uh, I was thinking about Belgium, obviously, while uh, the, the revenue has declined year over year, we saw a very strong customer activity. Yeah, well, 42%. Mm. Yeah, 42%. Yeah. So it was a good, good uh, activity yeah. in the market. But these headwinds and also a few one-offs in the quarter has resulted in an unsatisfactory performance and also led to actions being taken mm. uh, to improve profitability further. Mm. Um, what can you say about these uh, type of actions and also the magnitude of these actions? Yeah, we are. So what we are doing now, we, we are taking actions to um, to slow down the cost increase, um, and um, you could basically uh, divide it into three buckets. So we have uh, in the first bucket that's reducing losses in North America. Uh, it's um, about the, uh, taking down the marketing investments until we have rolled out our own platform um, across our footprint. Um, a few other examples is we, we did um, close down uh, our offering in Iowa. And we are also, we have decided um, <coughs> not to utilize one of our market access opportunities <coughs> in the States. Mm. Yeah. Then it, it, the second bucket, uh, that's about reprioritizing our investment project. It's reviewing all our investment projects um, closing down or delaying some to free up resources for our strategic initiatives like KSP and also to reduce costs there. And, and then the third one, that's around um, um, OPEX or cost optimization and uh, really reviewing the entire P&L and looking for efficiencies and, um, and scalability opportunities. We, we, we have a, a, a recruitment or headcount freeze for non-essential roles. Mm. We're reducing traveling or restricting traveling. And, um, and with these um, measures that we're taking, we, we expect them to, to slow down the, the cost growth significantly. Mm. Now I'm seeing a significant cont positive contribution already for this year mm. on the back of those initiatives that, that are already being initiated. So, so we're really taking this uh, mm. heads on. And in the trading update also um, gave a target of EBITDA of, of 200 million. Uh, yeah, for the full year. For yeah. the full year 23, yes. yes. At least, yeah. 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 And uh, <laughs> if we shift focus and, and talk about this quarter mm -hmm. uh, that we're in, it seems to be off to a very good start mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of daily average um, revenue, uh, uh, gross earnings revenue. Uh, what can you say about uh, your expectations of the rest of the year? Yeah, normally the World Cup uh, events means a strong intake and reactivation of our database. And the big positives with the World Cups or, or Euro tournaments is basically that we bring a higher base of active customers into the coming quarters. And that's indeed what we have done again now in, in sort of coming into Q1 23 with a higher base than we had prior to the tournament. And that's a very positive thing. And on top of that, we've had a good margin in sports uh, for the first 36 days of the quarter as well. So that combined has led to a, a very strong start to the year with uh, around 3.7 million of daily active, uh, the, the average daily revenues in, in uh, pounds. Uh, so 3.7 million pounds is a very strong start. And if we exclude Netherlands from that, it would be it would have been around 2.9 million. So it's still a very strong start to the year and, and up 36% as reported and or 31% in constant currency. So again, a very strong start, which bodes well uh, for, for, the, for the year ahead. And as, as on top of these initiatives that Patrick mentioning to further, if we can grow top line fast and we can keep cost growth under control, that would be the improved profitability. So we're on, definitely on the right track in that sense. Mm. That's very reassuring to hear. And that will get to be the closing remark for today. Thank you both very much for your time. Thank you, Linda. Thank you.